So, we have been um, uh, saying in the uh, previous lecture or previous uh, couple of lectures that the, uh, uh, the reversible isothermal and the reversible adiabatic process uh, both have played a crucial role in the development of fundamental ideas such as the Corno cycle, absolute temperature scale and so on. Okay. Uh, so, these are very special processes uh, plus we also showed how any uh, arbitrary reversible cycle may be decomposed into a series of infinite number of uh, uh, into an infinite number of uh, Corno infinitesimally small Corno cycles. Okay. This was made possible because we were able to take an arbitrary internally reversible process and replace it with a, a sequence of reversible adiabatic and reversible isothermal processes. Uh, so, what uh, this suggests is that um, when we are looking at issues related to second law uh, irreversibilities and so on, depicting processes using uh, uh, TS coordinates will actually be better because these two processes namely the reversible isothermal and the reversible adiabatic will then fall along coordinate lines. So, for instance, if I use uh, T s coordinates <coughs> then uh, reversible adiabatic process which we said just in the previous lecture uh, to be. So, reversible adiabatic process is one for which uh, S 2 is equal to S 1, but D s is also equal to 0. So, this would be a reversible adiabatic process. And similarly, a reversible isothermal process would fall like this. So, this would be a reversible isothermal process. Okay. So, these two processes which are uh, so special would then fall along coordinate lines and if there is any irreversibility then this can be illustrated very easily and very nicely using the T s coordinates. Okay. So, uh, now uh, we were using P v uh, coordinates so far, P v coordinates have their own merits, a um, lot of information can be drawn from them. Now, we will also start using T s coordinates. So, um, there is no uh, preference of one over the other, you know uh, students who are going through the course must be able to illustrate processes both on P v as well as T s diagrams and must learn how to interpret diagrams drawn using P v or T s coordinates. Okay. So, each one has its own advantages and uh, so we will use them appropriately whenever we want to illustrate something and we will illustrate it effectively using the uh, most appropriate coordinates for, uh, for the purpose. Okay. Now, the other uh, advantage of uh, using uh, T s coordinate uh, lies here. You may recall that we wrote this expression. So, we wrote this expression for um, entropy change of a system uh, in the uh, most general form. Okay. Now, if the uh, process were to be internally reversible, then I can write for an incremental change in entropy of the system, I can write delta s equal to delta q over t plus delta sigma i n t. Now, uh, if the process were internally reversible, then this would become equal to 0 because there is no internal uh, reversibility. So, now I can write delta q equal to uh, t times uh, d s, where s is the entropy of the system or I may also write it in a specific uh, form as delta q equal to uh, t times d s, where I have divided both sides by the mass of the system or mass contained in the system. Now, if I integrate this, then I get q to be equal to integral 1 to 2 t d s or capital Q equal to 1 to 2 t d s, both are okay. So, what this says is if I plot a process in t s coordinates, then the area under the process curve is nothing but if I plot a reversible process in t s coordinates, then the area under the process curve is nothing but the heat interaction that the system has with the surroundings. Just like the area under the curve for a fully resisted and hence reversible process in a PV diagram is the work interaction, here it is the heat interaction. Okay. So, this we illustrated uh, earlier in this diagram. So, here A is a, a reversible process as we uh, said before. So, A is a reversible process. So, the area under the process curve for A is nothing but Q 1 to 2. 
So, that is the additional advantage in plotting processes using TS coordinates. Okay. The area under the curve for reversible processes may directly be taken as the heat interaction uh, that the system has with the surroundings, but not so for irreversible processes obviously. In the just as um, what we mentioned in connection with PV diagram, if the process is not a fully resisted process, then we cannot really uh, show the entire process and hence we cannot calculate integral PDV. So, even if you manage to draw a process line between let us say for states which are far apart, it will still not be uh, displacement work. Okay. The same way here area under the curve is heat interaction only for a reversible process not for irreversible processes. So, area under the process curve for a reversible process in this coordinate system is the heat transfer whether it is heat supplied to the system or heat rejected to the system that we can easily see. Again if you uh, uh, look at uh, this expression, okay, notice that in the absence of any internal irreversibility if heat is supplied to the system then its entropy increases. Okay. So, based on this we can determine whether uh, heat is supplied during the process or heat is being rejected during the process. So, if you uh, if you see for instance uh, for process A notice that entropy increases from uh, the initial state 1 to the final state 2 which means that heat is supplied. So, Q is greater than 0 in this case heat is supplied to the system. So, by knowing the directionality of the process we can uh, determine whether heat is being supplied or rejected okay? and that comes from this expression here. So, if uh, delta Q is positive then delta S is positive in the absence of sigma int. Okay, so, here uh, we have illustrated polytropic processes you may recall that um, uh, we wrote down or we uh, actually showed polytropic processes on a PV diagram earlier. Uh, now, we are showing the same thing on uh, TS diagram. Okay. Notice that n equal to 0 corresponds to a constant pressure process P equal to constant isobaric, n equal to infinity corresponds to isochoric process V equal to constant n equal to 1 of course is isothermal for an ideal gas all these are for ideal gases okay isothermal and n equal to gamma as we mentioned earlier is isentropic for an ideal gas we will show this in a minute we will show that this is isentropic for an ideal gas in a second hmm. Notice that isocores are steeper than isobars on a TS diagram and that is actually an important point to keep in mind when we go and look at uh, Brayton cycles or other uh, air standard cycles that you may encounter later. Okay. That isocores are steeper than isobars on a TS diagram. This information is important in gas dynamics also when you study gas dynamics in the next level, uh, uh, next level course. So, how do we illustrate um, uh, the um, phase change of water in, uh, in TS coordinates that is shown here. So, you can see that you still see the, uh, the dome shaped region which encloses a two phase uh, mixture region. So, this side is superheated and this side is compressed liquid or subcooled liquid. The uh, most important thing that you should uh, uh, take away from this uh, illustration is the uh, uh, is the shape of the isobar. So, an isobar in the TS coordinate diagram looks like this. Okay. Uh, this is important because when we look at thermodynamic cycles later on for example, Rankine cycle um, usually Rankine cycle operates between uh, two pressures the condenser pressure and the boiler pressure. So, it operates between these two isobars. So, knowing the shape of isobar is important um, when we uh, depict cycles on TS coordinates. Okay. So, this is what the isobar looks like. And similarly, when we look at uh, Brayton cycle later on, once again the Brayton cycle operates between uh, uh, turbine pressure and 
uh, intercooler or uh, uh, which is the equivalent of a condenser. Uh, so, that pressure and so we need to be able to show isobars on a TS diagram for an ideal gas and then illustrate processes. So, you know how to uh, depict isobars on a TS diagram. So, so, this is what an isobar looks like. So, we should be able to show isobars on a TS diagram for uh, an ideal gas as well as for a two phase mixture. Although we have shown a TS diagram uh, for liquid water water vapor mixture here, uh, the uh, cor one corresponding to R134A or any other refrigerant will look identical except for the numbers. And what is also uh, shown in this uh, illustration is, um, is a process 1, 2 which as you can obviously see is an isentropic process. Okay, now let us look at uh, um, a worked example. So, we are given two internally reversible cycles 1, 1 and 2 between the same temperature and entropy limit. So, both of them operate between the same temperature and same temperature limits and same entropy limits. Okay. Delta S is the same for both cycles and uh, temperature limits are also the same for both cycles. We are asked to determine if they are power absorbing or power producing and also uh, determine which one is more efficient. <coughs> okay. So, um, as you can see since these are internally reversible cycles all the processes are internally reversible which means the area under the process curve on a TS diagram uh, is the heat interaction that the system has with the surroundings. So, you can see that uh, based on uh, the uh, change of entropy uh, you can see that Q is positive for this process that means heat is supplied to the system uh, Q is less than 0 for this it is uh, rejected and heat is uh, Q is less than 0 for this which means heat is rejected. And similarly here Q is positive, Q is positive, Q is negative for this heat is rejected in process 3 1. So, heat is added in process 1 2 here and rejected in 2 3 and 3 1. Here heat is added in process 1 2 and process 2 3 and rejected in process 3 1. Okay. Now, let us look at the um, uh, uh, look at the net heat that is supplied during the cycle. Notice that the area under this curve which would be the total. So, if I look at the total area under process 1, 2 where heat is supplied it would look something like this. Notice that that is more than uh, the total heat that is rejected during process uh, 2, 3 which would look something like this. Okay. So, the heat rejected under process 2, 3 curve will look something like this and under process uh, 3, 1 would look something like this. So, the total heat supplied is more than this. So, the net area enclosed in the cycle is actually the <coughs> is the So, the net area enclosed in uh, the uh, process curve 1, 2, 3 is actually Q net and that is positive because heat supplied is more than the heat rejected. So, Q net is greater than 0 for this cycle. In the same manner, so you can see heat rejected in process 3, 1 here looks like this and heat supplied in process 1, 2 and uh, process uh, 2, 3 look like this. Okay. So, the net heat supplied as you can see is greater than 0 because the total heat supplied is greater than the heat rejected. Since net heat supplied is greater than 0 from first law of thermodynamics remember in a cyclic process delta W equal to delta Q or W net equal to Q net. Since Q net is positive, W net is also positive which means that both the cycles are power producing cycles. They are producing a positive amount of net positive amount of work. Okay. So, so, the net heat interaction is positive 
and so the uh, uh, the net work interaction is also positive for the uh, for the cycle therefore both the cycles are power producing cycles okay and this analysis was made possible because the processes are internally reversible all the processes in both the cycles are internally reversible cycles now we are also asked to determine which processes is more efficient okay now you can see from this illustration that heat supplied uh, in cycle 1 which is uh, uh, the total heat supplied in um, a cycle 1 is this so let me just let me just erase all this so total heat supplied in uh, in cycle 1 is this much and and total heat supplied in cycle 2 is this much notice that the network produced by both the cycles is the same because both of them have the same shape and they are operating between the same temperature limits and same entropy limits so area of the triangle this one is an inverter triangle this one is an upright triangle but the network is the same for both the cycles okay so this cycle which is cycle 1 is given more heat and it produces a certain amount of work whereas cycle 2 receives lesser amount of heat but produces the same amount of work which means that cycle 2 is more uh, cycle 2 is more efficient so heat supplied in cycle 1 is more since the network produced in both the cycles is the same cycle 2 is more efficient now you may wonder uh, for instance since both are uh, reversible cycles and they operate between the same temperature limits and the same entropy limit should they not have the same efficiency okay. now bear in mind that we are supplying different amounts of heat to each one of the cycle which is why their efficiencies may be different uh, all the statements that we made earlier had certain very important uh, constraints uh, they should operate between the same reservoirs and they should be supplied with the same heat so only then the comparison becomes fair so here we have supplied different amounts of heat which is why they have different efficiencies we are also asked to determine uh, what would be the um, uh, temperature limits of an internally reversible Corno cycle between the same entropy limits okay so if I have a Corno cycle which operates between the same entropy limits notice that a Corno cycle on a TS diagram would look like this okay let us um, let me see okay so a Corno cycle on a TS diagram operating between two reservoirs TH and TC and two isotherms I am sorry two isotopes would simply look like this one two three and four one two is reversible isothermal which means on a TS diagram this will become a horizontal line two three is reversible adiabatic which means this will be a vertical line three four is reversible isothermal at t equal to tc so that is a horizontal line and this is a vertical line so that is what we have shown here so illustration of the Corno cycle on a TS diagram also becomes very nice when you use I mean and a TS diagram becomes very nice so that is yet another reason why TS coordinates are preferred when we start uh, discussing second law uh, irreversibilities and so on. Okay. So, what we are asked to determine uh, now is the temperature limits for a Corno cycle that would operate between the same entropy limits. So, notice that the uh, for cycle 1 uh, the upper limit would be upper temperature limit would be the same as uh, TH okay? and the lower temperature limit based on the heat that is rejected 
we can calculate the lower temperature limit to be so total heat rejected is equal to this okay so if i write it in terms of delta s so this is what it looks like so for a corno engine that operates between the same uh, entropy limits the sink temperature will be th plus tc over 2 so the equivalent corno cycle for cycle 1 would be one that operates between th and th plus tc over 2 okay that's what is given here you can show similarly that for cycle 2 uh, the equivalent Corno cycle will operate between a temperature of Th plus Tc over 2 as the hot reservoir uh, temperature and Tc as the cold reservoir temperature. Okay. So, we have gone just about as far as we can go with uh, uh, this expression. As I said earlier, this expression is very, very good for um, uh, drawing inferences on entropy changes of processes, effect of internal irreversibilities and so on. But we really cannot calculate uh, delta S using this expression. We can only draw inferences on delta S whether it is positive, equal to 0 or negative and so on and so forth. So, what we are going to do next is uh, calculate delta S for a, uh, a reversible process. Okay? We will develop relations for calculating reversible process. Remember S is a property. So, as long as you know, uh, we know delta S for between two states, any irreversible process operating between those two states will also have the same entropy change. Okay, so, that is the basic idea. Okay, so, we develop what are called TDS relationships. Okay. So, for a fully resisted process, uh, which means it is a reversible process where there is no uh, Ke or Pe change, we can write first law in differential form like this. Okay. Since the process is uh, uh, internally reversible, we may write delta Q as TDS because it is internally reversible and we can write uh, this relationship TDS equal to du plus PdV. We may also um, eliminate du by using the fact that H is equal to U plus PV and then taking the differential and write TDS equal to DH minus VdP. For some uh, situations, this relationship is useful. For other uh, situations, this is more useful. Generally, for uh, steady flow systems, this is more useful because it involves the enthalpy. For uh, systems with fixed mass, this is uh, more useful because there we are only seeing internal energy changes, not enthalpy changes. Okay? But both can be used. Notice that this is written for a reversible process. Okay? And as I said before, when we calculate entropy change, when we want entropy change between two states as we showed here. So, entropy change between state 2 and state 1 may be calculated in any way I wish. Okay? So, I may write, I may uh, use a sequence of reversible processes between state 1 and 2. For example, since it is a TS diagram, I may use an uh, isentropic process like this and then an isothermal reversible isothermal process like this, calculate the entropy change for each one of this and then get S2 minus S1. Now, an irreversible process like B which operates between 1 and 2 will also have the same entropy change. So, that is the basis of uh, TDS relationships okay? and that is what we are doing here. Okay. So, just like what we did earlier uh, when we wanted to calculate uh, property change or when we wanted to calculate delta U uh, for a pure substance, we will now just look at how to calculate entropy change of uh, different uh, forms of pure substances. Okay? For solids and liquids which are incompressible, we can actually use this relationship, this is more meaningful. Uh, dV is 0 for solids and liquids because they are incompressible. So, TDS equal to du and du itself may be written as mc dt. So, if you integrate delta S for, uh, for this uh, system which consists of a solid or liquid of mass m comes out to be m times c times natural log t2 over t1 where c is the specific heat capacity. 
Now, the um, same relationship may be uh, written for a perfect gas. For example, if I write this for a perfect gas, I may write this as C p times d t calorically perfect gas. So, uh, V itself may be written as uh, <coughs> since P V equal to R t, V itself may be written as R times t over P. So, I may write this as R times t over P times uh, d p. So, if I bring t to the denominator here, I can integrate and get one expression for delta s involving temperature and pressure. If I use this, then I can get another expression for delta s involving uh, t and the specific volume v. Okay. So, for ideal gases, three such expressions may be obtained. So, this involves t and volume, this involves temperature and pressure, this involves pressure and volume. Notice that for a perfect gas that undergoes an isentropic process, right? For a perfect gas that undergoes an isentropic process, um, uh, delta S equal to zero, and so we can show from this last relationship that P two, P two raised to gamma is equal to P one V one raised to the power gamma. So this becomes a polytropic uh, process with index gamma, which is what we had illustrated earlier. That's why we said this was an isentropic process for a uh, perfect gas. For mixture of perfect gases, the expression uh, remains the same where the pressure, we have to be careful about the pressure, we are using the Dalton's model here. So, we use the partial pressure of that particular component. Okay? And we can do this on a mass basis or on a molar basis, but only thing is partial uh, pressure of that particular component has to be used. So, one has to be a little bit careful when dealing with mixture of perfect gases. Now, in the case of um, um, water and R134A, we can get the entropy values from the uh, table. So, for, so for superheated uh, water or superheated R134A, we can directly retrieve the values from the table. For a two phase mixture, we use the same expression as before. So, S equal to SF plus SG minus SF times X for a two phase mixture. Just like we calculated specific uh, internal energy or specific volume or specific enthalpy. For a compressed or subcooled liquid, we may approximate S as SF of T, the corresponding. Uh, uh, specific entropy of saturated liquid at the same temperature. Okay, so, what we will do next is um, work out a few examples which illustrate how to calculate uh, entropy change using the TDS relations. Okay. <coughs>